welcome to the Tourism Hub podcast, a podcast devoted to you and your excellence, providing inspiration and education for the entrepreneurs, experience makers and excellent seekers of our industry to take your tourism business and career to a whole new level. And I am your host, Despina Karatius. Well, hello, everybody. I'm here with Dan. He is the traffic team leader here at Bendigo Tramways, part of Bendigo Heritage Attractions. Welcome to Tourism Hub Podcast, Dan. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Now, I've just had an awesome uh, personalised tour around the tramway depot, a very famous historical restoration, one of the world's only biggest please uh tell me more about the tramway depot and how significant it is to bendigo and what you do here so we're probably the oldest operating tram depot here in australia Uh, we're certainly operating on the oldest infrastructure um, that operated here in bendigo back in the early 1900s uh, so we've got two main areas of uh, our tourism product here where we got our talking tram tours out on the out on the road. And it's very unique in that the trams are operating on potentially not the oldest track around, but the original network. So we're very lucky in order to be able to save about four and a half or so kilometres of our original network here in Bendigo. Um, and we're still operating on that network today. Incredible. Now, seeing the trams and the history, you just feel this historical nature going through the depot. Uh, We're talking a hundred plus year fleet or collective in the depot. Yes, that's right. So a lot of our fleet has either already celebrated its centenary or will do in the next five to ten years. Uh, A lot of our talking tram tour trams have already been, have already had their centenary celebrations. Um, and those, there's a few of them from the 40s and the 50s, uh, but they're still beautiful heritage cars as well. Excellent. Now, in the now we talked about the heyday before cars, and this was used as a you know this was a, a genuine public transport means of public transport. Since 1972, it's become a very iconic visitor experience. Tell me a little bit about the history that you shared with me about the, uh, the, the advocates and the rebels and the change makers that made this happen. So in the early 1972, there was this imagined glamour of having cars and everyone wanted to have a car and the status that, it came, that came with it. Um, so as a result, not many people were riding the trams anymore as a public passenger service and the State Electricity Commission couldn't justify maintaining a tram a um, public tram network here in Bendigo. So they started the process to shut the tram depot down, sell off the assets. Uh, But there was a team here in Bendigo that later got known as the Rebels who didn't want to see the trams disappear into history. So they were very um, cunning in the way they approached it and did their best to save the trams here in Bendigo. Uh, There are a lot of of, um, avenues they pursued like uh, petitions and uh, seeking permission from the government to run a tour tram product Um, and as part of that as well they started being a little bit cheeky doing things like welding things to the track to stop the trams moving or nicking bits of the components out of the motors in the trams Um, it was all very cheeky there was a lot of hard work but it ultimately paid off with and we're seeing the benefit of it here today Um, we are we have been running effectively since 1902 our electric tram network in the late 1800s um, with the early renditions of the battery and the steam-powered trams. And then we were never truly shut down in the truest sense of the word. We went from being a public network for a few months not running and then going into our tour trams from December 1972. And we've been running ever since with our wonderful tour trams with popularity just increasing all the time. I love it. And you can see as, as well as the incredible work that you do as specialists in tram restoration, you have also become real iconic in the visitor experience that you offer to anyone that is coming to enjoy Bendigo. So developing these trams and niche experiences, as you've showed me with the Blues tram and the Santa tram that's about to launch, 
I've, I, I want to ask you firstly, just how that, um, yeah, how your journey with developing iconic visitor experiences. I am curious about your booking capabilities internally in managing fleet and timetables and how you go about that. I know a lot of tour operators would uh, can resonate with, uh, with that as well. But let's start with that, just your journey with the visitor experience in your role and, uh, and trialling new things. So I started here about probably about 13, pushing 14 years ago as a volunteer. Um, I came along originally as one of the drop-ins uh, with me. Other half was already working here at the time. Um, I managed to do all the touristy things in Bendigo in a few days, but still I had two weeks to fill in on this on this particular trip. So I hung around, just hopped into the office one day and helped the uh, my predecessor, in fact, do a bit of office work at the time, and I just sort of kept coming back and they never got rid of me. <laughs> um, and then I, prob- I came on board as a as the traffic team leader about two and a bit years ago now. Um, so coordinating the tram movements on each given day, making sure we've got the, the staff out on the tram, keeping the maintenance schedules running and keeping our, helping keep our trams scheduled and running on the tracks. Um, I'm one of, of a large team of uh, traffic team who all really contribute their part to keeping Bendigo's heritage alive. That is a big job, looking at how many trams and how many people are out there. What kind of system, do you have an internal customised system to help you manage that, this, uh, I guess, these logistics? So there's lots of little systems that all build up um, to keeping everything running here. Um, between our rostering systems, we've got a information and compliance management program that's been designed by a, an Australian company called Lucidity. Um, which helps us manage a lot of our rail safety and incident management response. Um, And we've also got, being such a niche industry, we do have a lot of customised programs we've developed in-house for managing things like our maintenance schedule. Um, uh, Prior to Lucidity, a lot of our competency management as well. Um, And a lot of just intellectual knowledge that comes along with us. So because we are so unique in that we're a tourism service that operates like a public transport at, at the public transport level out on the road interfacing with many different stakeholders um, there's really nothing that has been developed that works would work specifically for us so we've had to do our research and a lot of our practices a lot of our systems have been modeled both on the original state electricity commission processes and procedures for maintenance as well as a fair bit on uh, modern tram maintenance concepts as well i love that that you've gone back into what the authorities, I guess, measure you up against to model how you will manage th- those systems. Well, yeah, that's, fa- that's fairly true. Um, the, the authorities, being the Office of National Rail Safety Regulator, is what they call co-regulatory. So they don't tell us how we do it. They tell us what we need to be achieving and then they will... Uh, audit us and uh, monitor us based on our own internal standards. So we can be safely say they're very safe <laughs> to uh, to uh, to experience, which I'm about to, and I'm very excited to go on my first uh, Bendigo tram tour. Now, your um, now in terms of being under the Bendigo Heritage Attractions Group. Is that something that was always the case or is that did that come into play when you saw, well, we've got three iconic experiences, um, let's, let's merge our resources together. How did that come about? So the original organisation that governed us, which we still are just with a change of title, was the Bendigo Trust. Now, the Bendigo Trust was around a little bit before the trams Uh, became a tourism product in 1972 and they were tasked at the time with managing and operating the Central Deborah Gold Mine as a tourism attraction Um, and then we joined as part of that uh, here at here at Bendigo Tramways. Uh, Nowadays we operate under the title of Bendigo Heritage Attractions which is our trading name and we are now operating with the Central Deborah Gold Mine, Bendigo Tramways and the Bendigo Joss House Temple all under the same organisational umbrella. What I loved what you shared with me, Dan, is how working under the one umbrella, you have a whole range of skill set you can tap into and it's not unusual for you to kind of cross over to help each other between the businesses, which is this true spirit of collaboration and really being resourceful, particularly in a region. Yes, that's fairly true. Um, 
a lot of our um, a lot of our corporate work, so finance, human resources, marketing, is all managed by the same team uh, in our executive office. But then there's also a lot of other um, experiences that our staff from other attractions have that can help in the different attractions. So, as an example, our the manager up at the Central Deborah Gold Mine has a wealth of knowledge with overhead infrastructure. So we tap into that knowledge fairly regularly to help manage our overhead infrastructure and he's in fact our um, tramways consultant, for lack of a better term, in relation to the overhead, uh, in addition to our volunteer engineers who help out with uh, the engineering side of our overhead and track. Wonderful. A lot of mentors around, by the sound of things. Now, I want to, um, uh, I'm inspired by the innovation of the different themed trams. When someone comes up with an idea like that, like take me through when, when you're sitting around the table, I've got an idea for a blues tram. Like from, from that point, to let's give this a go. Let's give it a go because I think a lot of, t- you know, whether it's tourism businesses or small businesses in general might have an idea, but sometimes it's just left as an idea rather than giving it a go and then suddenly it's a hit and you're telling me like, you know, things like the Santa tram or the blues tram can fill up very quickly. Um, I guess in, it, it sounds like you have a culture of, of giving things a go. Would that be correct in saying? Yeah, that's fairly correct. Um, like all ideas, most of our ideas come right out of left field. Um, any, any, any concept, we'll, we'll sort of discuss it, we'll sit down, we'll work out the logistics. Is this something that we can easily achieve or potentially not so easily achieve as well? Uh, what, are the, what are the different things we need to be thinking about? Do we have the staffing to allow for this? Do we have the infrastructure? Do we have the rolling stock for any of the products that relate to the tram specifically? Um, do we have any skill sets that we either don't have or we need to try and develop in-house or potentially need to try and outsource? Um, so in the past, when we had our restaurant tram services here in Bendigo, a restaurant dinner service was something that we really couldn't achieve in-house completely. So we would deliver that in partnership with restaurants inside within Bendigo area who would come and they would manage the the, the cooking of the food and the dinner service in general, they provide the wait staff and the um, the bar staff. We would provide the tram and the driving staff and keep the tram maintained. Um, as is different from our current Friday night drinks tram product, where that was something we could deliver completely in-house. So we were able to provide the bar staff. We were able to offer training for our internal staff who wanted to learn to also serve in the bar. Um, and so we're able to provide the tram, the maintenance and all of the staffing involved with it. So it's a completely internal product. So good. It's not only just, it's working within your own resources that you can, uh, you can develop a new experience, a new tram experience using the resource that you have, but also partnering and packaging product with your other local business community. Uh, which is all in the spirit, again, of uh, collaboration and bringing in new experiences that you can showcase something else in the region using your influence, I guess, as being a star attraction. I love that. Yeah, so uh, it's very much about being part of the Bendigo tourism community in general. So it's not Bendigo heritage attractions to the exclusion of all the rest of the tourism in Bendigo. It's what can Bendigo Heritage Attractions deliver to help bolster tourism within Bendigo. And Bendigo is very much a tourism town. We've got that beautiful, rich gold rush history here in Bendigo that brings a lot of people to Bendigo. And all of us businesses have something to contribute towards that tourism as a whole. And you're sitting right in front of uh, a plethora a plethora of tourism awards. You've got Hall of Fame Tourism Victoria Awards. They're coming up soon. You've got an Australian Tourism Award, um, and that's specifically for Bendigo Tramways. Yeah, so um, we're very we're very lucky. A lot of it's based around our existing systems that we've been out that we've achieved, and as long as we're maintaining our both our safe operations as well as a premier tourist attraction, um, we're able to achieve these sorts of awards. Um, a lot of the credit as well needs to go to our talented marketing team who can write up the submissions a lot better than any of the rest of us could. <laughs> Teamwork make the dream, makes the dream work, right? Um, now, Dan, you're clearly passionate about Bendigo and trams. Was that always the case? 
strangely enough, no. So I'm a I was a Sydney Sydney cider for most of my life. Um, I gr- was born in born in an out, out of town in Wollongong, but then spent all my life in Sydney. And um, if you would have come to me when I was in my early twenties and said that in my early thirties I'd be coordinating tram movements and working with a heritage tram product, I would have thought you were crazy. I I never had an intention growing up of working with trams. Um, I suppose, again, it's one of those out of left field things where I came along one day as one of the drop-ins and I just hung around. It seems to be a very good fit as well. It's a it's a wonderful place to work and it merges two really wonderful things with the, the tourism side of things and the that unique rail tourism that we can deliver. So good. And you've clearly shown over your journey some really good leadership skills what would you what would be some advice you would impart on uh, someone a a young person wanting to get into the tourism industry and I love that you've come your journey here at tramways has been through volunteering and I think that's something that a lot of whether they're going to TAFE or university can forget about the benefits of volunteering to find their true calling um, what would be some advice that you would uh, share? Probably just get into it. Um, I did, had no formal qualifications of any real sort when I first started here. Um, it was through working here that I developed my, my love and my passion for tourism and that drove me to go back to school and study tourism and travel um, as a diploma course. Um, and there's really there's no, no real barrier to getting into tourism as with my journey, hop in, be a volunteer, or a lot of um, tourism attractions do employ based on your based on your skills, not necessarily your qualifications. Because while you can teach tourism concepts and you can teach customer service concepts, it's really that life experience that gives you your gives you the ability to work well in a tourism setting. It's very much about the customer focus. Ah. Uh. Absolutely. Very, very well said. Uh, Well, Dan, thank you so much for saying yes to do our interview together. Um, Where can, so, so where can people find out more about Bendigo Tramways? Well, there's a fair bit on our website. Uh, We're also on Facebook. So uh, pop onto our website, bendigotramways.com or look up Bendigo Tramways on Facebook. Uh, We get a lot of information on there. There's a lot of links into our uh, booking system and the different experiences that we can offer. Now, someone that geeks out, you mentioned the the booking system, two words that are very top of mind for myself as a, like you're you're a tram boy, I'm a hot air balloon girl. Um, Do you, is is your booking system also something that was customised for you, like what you do with your maintenance programs or is that something that you have kind of bought off the shelf? It's something we've more or less bought off the shelf. It's a program called Custom Link uh, that do a lot of booking systems for rail and accommodation and uh, cruise companies. And that we've made tweaks to it over, over the time that we've had it uh, in order to better, be- better achieve what we need to achieve out of a booking system. Um, but it is something that we got more or less off the shelf. Excellent. Custom link. I haven't heard of that one. So that will help a lot of people that are on the same journey looking for a booking system solution to manage inventory. Um, Thank you so much, Dan Cliff. Well, thank you for having me here today. (laughs) He's been so, uh, this was like it was your 100th interview, uh, Dan. Thank you so much. And uh, you'll be hearing a lot more from Bendigo, my first time visit. And uh, this was my first stop. Pardon the pun. And uh, you'll be hearing a lot more. Okay, thanks, guys. Talk soon. Relax.